your javascript application needs data and information without data and information your application will look really really blank and we don't want to build an application which is blank now when you need to deal with data and information you got to store them somewhere where are you going to store them hey this is tapas welcome back to the next video of this javascript series today we are going to learn about variables a very basic concept very fundamental concepts and as a beginner to javascript you must have to know you know what variable is and what is the difference between variable and values these are simple things but at some time it might get confused so you know i want to kind of teach you this particular topic quickly but with some amount of example so that it connects the dot very very well all right so let's look into the variables and start learning variables if you have not subscribed to this channel please go ahead and subscribe as i keep sharing a lot of good content over here i hope you like them and you enjoy them all right so let's get started we can start learning about javascript variables by writing code like let name equals to some value but we are not going to do that way you know why do you remember this slide from our previous video yeah that's right we are learning javascript using a new learning model the mental model right so in the last video we learned about tokenizing parsing interpreter lexical environment these topics now we are learning about variables and functions today specifically focusing on variables so we'll be learning how things works under the hood then we get into the syntax that's our whole philosophy in for this playlist right so that's what we will be following so let's get started let's get started with the variables and let's start learning things visually okay now when we talk about a variable in javascript it is nothing but a storage to store some information or the data that you use in your application as simple as that so if this is storage there could be multiple such values there could be multiple such information that you deal with in your programming so that means there could be multiple such storage is possible now if there are multiple storages you have to identify this storage some way that's why the name comes into picture each of the storage will have a specific name with that name we can identify the storage so that we can retrieve the value that is stored in the storage or we can put a new value into the storage think about us the human being think about the case if we don't have name given it will be very difficult to kind of identify each other right similarly to that in javascript also we need to have storage that is where we store the value and the storage name is the variable name so we have a storage and the storage has a name let's say fruit and it has a value let's say mango so here the variable is fruit and the value is mango okay so this is how we learn things visually now let's go and take a, take a look of how do you create a variable in the programming now we will be diving into a syntax again we'll be connecting to the, the dots to know how things works under the hood so how do we create a variable what is a syntax the syntax is you use a keyword called let or const then you give the storage name then you have an assignment operator and then you provide the value that you want to store into this particular storage whose storage name you are using here now there is another keyword that you could use called var we will be never ever talking about it you know that's something i recommend you to use but we have to know let const var little bit deeply when you talk up when we talk about the scope uh chapter when you talk about the javascript scope that is the time we'll be talking about let const and var much more deeply but for now just think about that there is a keyword called let or const there is a storage name equals to value so one example could be this let fruit is the storage name which is nothing but the variable and this variable is assigned a value called mango which is a string because you see a double quote around this one right so this is how the variable can be declared is very simple now the next thing we're going to talk about the value assignments we assign the value to a variable next if we assign another value to the same variable what exactly happened let's try to understand that visually so let's take this line of code let fruit equals to mango now you know what what will happen so there is a storage the storage is having a name called fruit and it having a value called mango now in the next line look at carefully i am assigning a new value to the fruit variable saying fruit equals to kiwi so in this case what will happen if i when i am assigning a new value to an existing variable already declared variable it is just going to 
replace the old value with the new one now fruit storage is having a new value called kiwi straight and simple okay let's take one more example of value assignments let fruit equals to mango and then we have a storage of course with the name fruit with the value mango and then another expression says let vegetable equals to carrots so we'll have another storage where vegetable is the storage name and carrot is the carrots is the value both are string mango and carrots now what we'll do we will equate we sorry not equate we will assign we'll use the assignment operator to say fruit you know assignment operator vegetable what happens in this case if we write a code like this in this case what will happen the right side one the vegetables value get assigned to the left side storage without doing anything with the right side storage value that means the right side storage value vegetables value is going to be intact which is like carrots but now the fruits value is going to go off and the new value will be the carrots so now both fruit and vegetable is having the same value called carrots so hope this value assignment is also very clear and how do we declare how do we create why do you create all these things are very very clear think about a situation that if you're writing a programming and you don't have a variable to use how difficult it will be a same thing you 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 cannot define things for once and try to use them later point of time it will be really really hard so variables are very important okay now when you create variables there are certain rules specifically the four rules that you have to keep in mind the first rule is that name must have a digits or letters okay that's the first rule second rule is that you can have special characters but it it has to be only dollar or underscore no other special characters okay so name must have digits or letters and the name can have dollar or underscore the first character must not be a digit the first character must not be a digit that's the third rule and the last rule is like no reserve keywords it means uh, javascript ha has got a few keywords which are like reserve for the language for example the late const we told those keywords reserve those are reserved javascript's own programming language is key keywords like that there are plenty of keywords available you cannot use those reserve keywords as a variable name okay that's the fourth one now what are we going to do we are going to take some examples and try to identify which one is a valid name versus which one is a is an invalid name okay first late dollar equals to string dollar is it a valid variable name dollar it is because the name can have a dollar it can also be just only dollar okay next one let tomorrow where the number is two it starts with number two it is invalid because it is breaking this one the first character must must not be a digit in this case it is a digit how about this one let underscore equals to underscore and let react hyphen play this is definitely correct because it can have underscore this is not correct because special characters allowed but only dollar and underscore in this case you have a hyphen or dash so it is not a invalid variable it is, is not a valid variable name it's an invalid variable now let's take this example is it valid or invalid in both the cases this is valid because it's satisfying all this criteria but one thing to here note both of them says my name but their cases are different in this case it starts with a capital m a big m in this case it's a small m these two are completely two different variable name so it means these two are completely two different storages having two different values and their storage names are completely different because these cases are matter so they are actually valid but you know they are two different one so i hope this variable name rules are clear the next thing that we are going to talk about the standards now we know the rules now when you start creating variables what kind of standards you should follow apart from those rules so apart from these rules the, the some of the best standards will be use camel case okay it should be human readable so it means that anybody looking into your code you know looking into the variable name they should understand what is this variable name is for if you are having a counter right you know uh, it, which maintains a count of something you probably select a name called count or counter you won't say my name equals to one you know so you know if you, you you can give any name as a variable name but 
it should be human readable it should be something that people can correlate people can understand okay the name should match the cause that's what basically you know what your program is intended to do and for that if you're creating a variable the variable should match the cause that's the that's the thing and the other thing is that never ever uh, name your variable like you know i j k a b c d things like that because this is this is very very confusing when somebody reviewing your code they won't be able to gauge like what is a b or c meant for until unless they have to read through the entire logic but that if the variable name is human readable if it is matching the cause just by looking into the variable they might guess like okay what you're going to do with this variable and when what kind of impact that variable is having in your logic one funny quote that i have heard from one of my mentor when i was learning javascript these variables and things like that the mentor told me that uh, if you know you have a kid in future and if you have to give a name of the kid will you really give the name as say a b c d i j k l you will probably give a name which is like more human readable which is like more suits to some kind of character that you want your kid to develop or somewhere it connects to something right so think similarly for the variable names as well you know treat them similarly like your kids or you know child's name so i thought of kind of giving it to you because i learned that from one of my mentors so that if you are creating a variable then make sure that you make it meaningful so with that this topic ends here uh, we learned about variable a lot up next we are going to learn about javascript functions we are going to go deep down understanding what is javascript functions why it is called the you know first class citizen in javascript programming language how to use it how to exploit it and once we done with that then we'll be getting into concept like call stack hoisting scope scope chain closure all these things you know one by one so i hope that you found today's one useful and uh, you know uh, you will make use of it please go ahead and practice a lot uh, whatever you learn and try to learn with this mental model that we are we are we are actually getting our grip on okay so i'll leave you with that see you soon with the javascript functions video thank you very much